Okay. Good afternoon and welcome to our last meeting of February. I uh, appreciate it. we have a few people in the audience tonight and hopefully we have folks watching us on our Electric City Television. The invocation tonight will be given by Councilmember Beatrice Thompson and respects to the flags will be given by Councilmember Rick Lockridge. Please rise. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the privilege that you've given us to assemble in this council chambers once more. As we deliberate the business of our city, we ask that you would give us guidance, that we might make decisions that are fair and just and in the best interest of those whom we serve and pleasing in your sight. As we experience the best of times and the worst of times in our nation, we implore your strength that we might be instruments of your peace, so in love, compassion, and caring to the citizens in our community and our nation. We pause at this time to give thanks to our troops who work every day to keep us safe, to the employees who work hard for our city, and to our fellow council members who serve daily. Thank you for your everlasting goodness to all of us. Amen. 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 I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we get into the, the body of our meeting, I'm going to ask Chief Horn to come up here as a swearing-in ceremony. Chief. Uh, we do have one swearing in tonight. I'd like to call up uh, Casey Robinson. Casey is a 2010 graduate of Hart County High School in Hartwell, Georgia. He's a volunteer firefighter with the Hart County Fire Department. He received his firefighter one and two certifications, received certifications in uh, <coughs> numerous other fire rescue and medical courses. He successfully completed his probationary period and is qualified to be sworn in as an Anderson City firefighter. Casey, do you have anyone in the audience you'd like to recognize tonight? Yeah, my, uh, my mom and dad and my little brother. <laughs> and as I always say, thank you all for the sacrifices that you're getting ready to make to allow him to pursue his career as a firefighter. Uh, Casey, if you will, raise your right hand, repeat after me. I I, Casey Robinson, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, to do my duty as an Anderson firefighter, to do my duty as an Anderson firefighter, to serve my commanding officers with respect and dignity, to serve commanding officers with respect and dignity, to serve and protect the citizens of the city of Anderson, to serve and protect the citizens of the city of Anderson, with compassion, courage, and integrity. With compassion, courage, and integrity and to uphold the laws, rules, and regulations <laughs> of the United States of America, of the United States of America state of South Carolina, the state of South Carolina, and the city of Anderson. And the city of Anderson. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Minutes of the February 8th minute meeting have been distributed. Are there any corrections or additions to the minutes? I'm not hearing any. Be adopted. I have a motion to approve first by Mr. Lockridge. Second. Second by Mr. John Roberts. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The minutes of February 8th passed unanimously. We have one item of old business, and that item is request the second and third reading of Ordinance 16 04, amending Chapter. 
58, section 58.2 of the Anderson City Code, providing for the qualifications of a municipal judge. Ms. McConnell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as you all know, last time you, when you passed this on first reading, um, <coughs> the primary reason for this amendment is to allow you to have the flexibility to appoint uh, people who are non-lawyers as judges for your municipal court. Uh, bear in mind, this does give you the flexibility to continue to appoint lawyers in that capacity as well as non-lawyers, so you still have that ability. In addition to conducting the bond hearings, which is one of their responsibilities, and being able to <coughs> issue warrants, these uh, non-lawyer judges would also be able to handle bench warrants, which is another means that we have of making our court system uh, be more efficient and um, uh, accessible to those that we serve. Um, with, uh, unless there are any questions, the staff would continue to um, support the passage of this ordinance on um, second and third reading. Thank you. We had a good discussion um, on the first reading. Are there any other questions or comments? I make a motion we approve it on uh, second reading. Oh, first by Mr. Harvey. Second. Second by Mr. John Roberts. Further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? It passes unanimously on the second reading. We'll make a motion that we approve it on third and final reading. Second. First by Ms. Stewart, second by Mr. Lockridge. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? It passes unanimously on the third and final reading. We'll move on to our first item of new business, and that item is request consideration on the appointment to the Board of Commissions of the Anderson Housing Authority. Ms. McConnell. Um, we are fortunate to have the Anderson Housing Authority here in our community. Uh, they, they serve to promote affordable, affordable quality housing here. Part of their charge is um, with their board of directors. They have a five-member board. You all as city council appoint those board members. And um, the term of Chase Christopher uh, expired in December. It is recommended by um, the board and um, Jeff Trahan, who is the executive director of the Housing Authority, that Mr. Christopher be reappointed. We've contacted him. He's very willing to serve. Chase has served for, um, I believe, uh, 25 years on that board, and they value his uh, longevity in uh, providing oversight on this board. He, he would serve with the other four board members, Charlie Irvin, Emily Owen, Jason Craddock, and Lauren Larison Smith. And this is a uh, position for a five year term. Thank you. Any comments or questions? Mr. Mayor, I make a motion. We accept it for general approval of Chase Christopher. Uh, first by. Second. Mr. Chapman, second by Dr. Thompson. Any further discussion or any discussion? to say we really appreciate him serving. How many years, Lindsay? 25. 25 years. That's one. Known him a long time. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passion answer. Yes, he's a well-respected bank in the community and serves on a lot of different things, so that's always a good thing to have. Our next item is request consideration of a contract for the housing demolition. Ms. McConnell. Um, in your last meeting, you amended the budget to allocate $100,000 from your fund balance to the area of demolishing substandard houses in our community. Um, I think we shared with you previously, both with the Neighborhoods and Housing Committee and then with the Council as a whole, that we probably have um, in the neighborhood of 100 houses that are substandard in the city that we would uh, like to begin to uh, eradicate in our community. We did have a program from 2005 to 2012 when we demolished 357 of those houses, so this would be an effort to continue to um, eliminate those um, houses that are not habitable in, within the city. We 
um, looked at a number of houses that are out there. We looked at the type of citations that these houses or these property owners had previously been cited for those properties being in that condition. We looked at the um, neighborhood impact and the types of, of, of other um, un desirable activities that go along with substandard houses and that's how we developed this list potential list of, of houses that could be considered for demolition um, when we solicited bids we did uh, reach out to contractors in our community who are in the demolition business um, and we although we only received one bid uh, we, we do know that there were at least three who were initially interested in this particular bid package. Um, Miller's Construction Company, they're located in Anderson County, submitted the bid of 132780 and that is for all, all 30 of the houses. Miller does understand that we had $100,000 we could allocate toward it. So in putting the bid together, they knew that the likelihood was that they would demolish a number of houses on the list. How many on the list would depend upon how far our $100,000 would go. Um, the bid that um, Miller submitted is good for one year. Uh, we would anticipate that um, we will work on these houses. If you remember, these houses, we will not purchase these houses. We're simply obtaining consent forms from the property owners to actually demolish the structures. And the reason, of course, that we're doing that is because for whatever reason, we've been unable to get the property owner to remedy the substandard condition. The bid package also requires that in addition to demolishing the structure, the contractor is required to leave the lot in uh, good graded condition so that it can be maintained in the future. It also includes the debris removal and the landfill tipping fees that are involved in the disposal of that debris. Um, we, if there are asbestos um, uh, studies and abatement that needs to be conducted on these properties. Uh, the staff will be responsible for doing that. That will not be included in Miller's contract. Um, and we will, work, we will work with DHEC to determine whether those studies are actually necessary or not. So as I said, we have more houses on the list than we um, have dollars available based upon Miller's bid. But the staff would recommend to you tonight that we approve the con construction, excuse me, the demolition contract with Miller not to exceed $100,000 and to demolish as many of those houses on the list as, that we ca as we can. The houses that are on the list are principally in Mr. Stewart's and Dr. Thompson's seats and we will work with them and kind of systematically go through that list to determine Number one, if we can ob obtain the consent form, determine what um, asbestos studies may or may not be necessary, and kind of get as many of the houses as we can. So you're not approving individual properties tonight. You're leaving that with the staff to begin to gain as many of those consent forms and permissions as, as possible to move forward. Um, we also have um, Maurice is with us uh, and Erica this evening, who both worked on this uh, demolition of the of, of the substandard houses. They've worked on this project together, and <clears throat> as I said, we'll be left with once the houses are demolished, we'll be left with a lot that can be properly maintained by the property owner. Thank you. Um, any comments, questions? I just Ms. Stewart and Ms. Dr. Thompson. Uh, just for the record and for clarity, you know, what we're doing is we're approving the $100,000 contract for Miller that, you know, and, and the houses are yet to be determined which one will be torn down. Correct. Because some of them may not be on that initial 30 list or whatever that, 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 that may change. It gives us the flexibility that if we run into a problem and cannot get the proper permission, it allows us to move to an, oh, an, another substitute property. That's correct. Thank you. Dr. Thomas. I was just going to 
was just going to say I'm very happy that we made this progress, and I'm really waiting with enthusiasm to see these houses torn down. So I would like to move that we accept this uh, contract with Mr. Uh, okay. Miller for the hundred thousand uh, dollars. First by Dr. Thompson. Second. Second by Mr. Lockridge. Of the. I guess a question I would have of the, of the hundred homes or so that we have on the list, are we in a better sense updating that home or updating that list or is that, do we feel like that hundred is encompasses the, that core group of homes that, that really need to be looked at in regards to demolition? I would say, Mayor, that the 100 probably is pretty indicative of really what's out there in terms of the core of your, your of your substandard properties. It doesn't necessarily mean that of those property, of, of that list of 100, it doesn't necessarily mean that everybody on that list is not complying with us. It means that those are ones that are on our radar that need our, our attention or that need attention. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor. Oh, Mr. Chad. Um, you had mentioned that the, the site, once the home is, is demolished, that the contract will have them grade the site. Does that also include um, seating and straw? Yes, yes, yes. it does. Right. Real quick, Mayor. Mr. Harvey. Um, just refresh my memory. The tipping fee is the fee that is charged to the person who demolishes it and takes it to the dump takes it to the landfill, that's correct. And, and so on this bid, I assume all these are estimates? They, they are estimates based upon what they believe the volume of debris is that has to go to the landfill. What happens, right like for instance, at this first one, you know, the, demolition, the, the demolition is 3,050 and the tipping is 2,400. What happens if the tipping is 3,000 or what happens if the tipping is 2,000? When they actually go over the scales, they get a, a printout of the of the weight and that's part of our check and balance system. Y'all help me out. Um, part of our check and balance system in terms of knowing what the actual ticket volume is that goes over those scales to the landfill. And we'll be billed on what the actual cost is? We'll certainly, is. we'll certainly be able to track it and know if one is more and one is less. You, it just means that if it if they underestimate it and it's like you said it's double the amount that's just less houses we're going to get torn down right but i mean if it like in the example you gave if the tipping fee was estimated at 2400 and it came in at, at 3000 then we'll still have to pay that 3000 because we chose to demolish that particular structure and they comes down <clears throat> under and we right be more or less houses Correct. on the list. Well, and for what it's worth, they usually separate the wood and metal structure from the concrete yeah. structures, and so the concrete structures that at eight dollars a ton, and the others at thirty dollars a ton. Right. And who owns the landfill? I what? Who? What, do we know what landfill they're going to? I I don't know that we know what landfill they're. And does the county have any C and D landfills or not? They do, but I don't know if that's where this is. Going. Well, I was just thinking if anybody ever asked the county to waive the fee. I mean, if some of these houses are in the districts of some of the city and county council members, like Ms. Floyd, for example. We can certainly ask that. If we could get that done, it would help us get some more. Let's get the one down. We'll explore with uh, Miller actually where they're, they're the disposing of this and see if that's a possibility. Or just see if there's any possibility the county has a place where they could be we will. disposed of, and maybe then have that dialogue. They may not be willing to do it, but we can ask. We'll ch we'll check on that. Anything else? Well, else? I'm sure. I got one. I'm sure that they do have a landfill because the county is embarking on tearing down. I think about 120 houses countywide themselves. So I'm sure they're taking it to their own landfill. Well, I mean, I know there's different landfills out there. Some of them right. are privately owned, and some of them are, but. That's just something I think we need to look at because that's a substantial part of the cost. It is, yes. Mayor, I agree. I mean, I'm excited if we can start knocking these off. All these are in my district, and uh, every one of them. So that's right. I'm excited for it. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor, say aye. Uh, Opposed?
It passes unanimously. Our last item of new business is request consideration of a contract of the Church Street Heritage Project. Ms. McCone. The Church Street Heritage Project is one that's been on our uh, uh, agenda, on our to-do list, I guess, for uh, a number of years. Uh, really, we've been working on it probably for about the past six years. Um, from 1900 to 1980, the uh, Church Street Business District was um, a certainly thriving center of commerce for African Americans in our community. Much of that physical presence was demolished in the early 1980s, and really we've been trying to work on um, a proper and appropriate way to document and rec recognize this part of our history, but to do it in a way that isn't just um, a book on a shelf or uh, something that's in a museum, but something that would appeal to all um, ages and would be uh, lasting in terms of the use of technology, arts and culture, tourism, really trying to make this um, a part that meets a lot of different needs. Uh, with that in mind, we um, created a um, conceptual plan to create a park that is, as we know it, in the East Church Street parking lot, kind of in the area behind uh, Mellow Mushroom and, and between the Bleckley Inn and McDuffie Street, sandwiched between McDuffie and, and Main Street. When we put this project out for uh, bid back in December, the um, project, and bear in mind the project is, it's, a, it's an urban park that has a lot of the same elements that you would see in our streetscape. So there's, uh, there's a great deal of, of sidewalk, brickwork, uh, pedestrian lighting, uh, up lighting in the trees, um, it has a great deal of landscaping in it, so it has that same aesthetic feel that you would get from the improvements similar to those we've made in our streetscape work. When we put the project out for bid in December, the uh, initial bids came in. We had three bidders, Moats Construction, Thrift Brothers, and Belt Construction. As we evaluated those bids, we really felt like we needed to um, fine-tune that bid, break the project into phases, and ask those bidders if they would um, take another look at their numbers and revise those bids to reflect the phasing. Two of those bidders, Moats and Thrift Brothers, did revise their bids and submitted those to us uh, at the end of January. Um, they broke, did break that down in, into phasing, and we took it as a staff this, a step further to refine that and determine if there were any other elements that um, could be, um, or revisions that could be made that really gave it a better value engineered project. Uh, we did make some of those adjustments, not to the, um, not to affect the um, aesthetic feel or the look of the project, but in terms of some of the quantities, like for example in the number of bollards that are in the, um, in the park itself that restrict um, uh, vehicular, throw, vehicular flow through a certain portion of the park, or changing stainless steel bollards to black bollards, those types of things. So the changes that we ultimately, ultimately made were quantity driven as opposed to um, being uh, changes that you would notice in the plan um, in terms of how the park would function. So this truly will add uh, green space to our park, uh, to our park properties. It makes logical connections from the, um, say, the city hall quadrant to through this parking lot, through Caton Alley, toward Carolina Wren Park. So little by little, we're connecting the pieces of our downtown that are places where people gather. We think that's an important part <coughs> in adding to your uh, ability to have different destinations that um, provide different venues for types of activities. And as you all know, we've had a lot of uh, success recently with our 
uh, fresh taste event that is conducted in this particular um, new park area. Ultimately, the um, Moats construction bid is $495,639.61 with some of those items that we identified that we could do without and not negatively impact the project. Um, that accounts for $35,336. The staff would recommend that you approve the contract, award it to um, Moats Construction for that $495,000 but at the same time pursue the change order that reflects that $35,000 reduction to allow us to capture some of those savings. Now this number, that means your, your ultimate number is $460,303.61, which does get us close to our last estimate for the construction of this project. Uh, in terms of funding, this would be a hospitality funded project. I would tell you that at the end of February, you will have uh, approximately $1.5 million in your hospitality fund. It does not, um, approval of this project and use of those dollars does not um, stall, postpone, or delay any other projects that you have on your list. If you remember, we are in the midst of a recreation uh, master plan update, and so any of the projects that were on our list, we said let's wait and see what the update tells us before we embark on any other uh, major projects. So pursuing this project does um, meet what you put in your list of projects for completion in terms of your downtown projects and it's a recreation and downtown project and it does meet a need that we feel is um, continues to be necessary in terms of offering things that our citizens seem to um, desire and want and gives us the opportunity to market us further in new ways both from a historical perspective, um, the use of technology. Uh, the other piece, the, the part of the project that this does not include is the um, um, sculptural, um, the art components for the park. Uh, if you remember in our conceptual drawings, part of telling the story of Church Street was with the use of sculptures and the use of what we called story boxes, which told the types of activities, the people, the flavor of things that um, made Church Street what it was. And the employment of technology in those story boxes is going to be a critical element going forward. Those artistic elements of the park will be pursued concurrently with the construction but won't be funded by the construction project. Those will be funded by um, hopefully by the private sector will help us some. We also hope to pursue and are pursuing several grant opportunities right now. And we've been fortunate enough to have received from Duke Energy a grant of $60,000 to help us with the educational piece of that. So we have that um, artistic element of it which will be kind of a separate phase. Even though we talked about this being a phase one, phase one of moats construction will get you the full park constructed in one, um, in one project. So if there's a phase two, phase two would consider any paving needs that are necessary after the construction is complete because we, the bulk of the pavement, of course, is being um, demolished and reinstalled as the park construction. Well, let me ask this question. I, I'm not totally clear on the two different phases. And, you know, obviously phase one is a heavy construction phase and be very uh, disruptive and a lot of mess, basically. But so when that gets completed and we go to phase two, are we going to then go back and have another mess? No, sir. We, we're we thinking we may not need phase two. That's why we separated it the way that we did. 
um, phase as it's indicated in the bid, phase two included full asphalt milling and repaving a lot of area. And we're, we're of the opinion that that may or may not be necessary at the end. And we would prefer to break them up into two phases like that so that we can fully assess to what degree, if any, repaving is necessary. It may be that we can seal the parking lot and have a nice fresh coat on it and it look fine. It may, it may be that we need something that's kind of in between full asphalt and milling, uh, but we won't really know that until the construction itself is complete. Ms. Stewart, a couple questions I know you mentioned you said this will be a hospitality funded project yes but it says here it's a hospitality and a TIF funded project so break out the portion to me how much is hospitality how much is TIF I will but as we promise you always when it comes to downtown we put TIF funds first and we supplement that with hospitality in this case the TIF fund we um, know that right at the moment we don't have enough TIF funds to complete the project, so it would be heavy on the hospitality side. We always promise you at the end of the year that we try to true those numbers up and whatever dollars we can put back into the repay the TIF fund, we do. So we will continue to do that, but I did want to say we know going in right now that we will spend more hospitality dollars on this project than we will TIF just because of the current availability of of the cash flow and what is that availability well in your budget in, you, in your TIF how much actually how much TIF is going in versus hospitality I don't know that Out I can the 495 in phase one well I would tell you in your in your TIF fund for projects you have about a hundred thousand dollars in your TIF fund in the budget we've spent some of those dollars already this year so I would say you probably have uh, $50,000 of that that would go from TIF in, into this project. That's just a, um, off the... And you could true yes. that number up at the end of fiscal year? Yes, we will. Yeah. And, we, and we always do. And the other, other comment is, you know, I know this is something that Dr. Thompson has, all, <laughs> has talked about a lot, and I'm very supportive of it, um, of this project. But again, I'd just like to go back and say what I've been saying you know, for many years on council now is that we're starting a new project, uh, breaking ground and going forward, but we need to do something to take care of our existing projects that we've got going on a maintenance schedule. And um, really love to see that happening because our parks are starting to look bad that we spent a million dollars on a couple of years ago. Well, what's gonna happen two years from now when this is get built, are we gonna spend another million dollars trying to fix it back up? You know, so again, I really like to see us move forward, move forward quickly on maintenance issues, you know, for projects that we built and we're moving on from our recreation center to our parks, to downtown projects. It's easy to build and go on, but we need to keep up with what we got. Point well made. I appreciate those remarks. But again, I'm very happy tonight. <laughs> this vision I know has been going on for at least 10 years. And I know my fellow council members are probably tired of hearing me say, let's get it on. And so tonight, as we vote to get this project started, I realize that there are other projects going on, but this is an old project. And I think it's high time we just step out on faith or whatever we need to step out on and get it done. It's going to be a great thing for downtown. We looked at Rian Park and the other little parks that we're building, and this is going to be a great addition it's also going to be something that's going to be really good for diversity. This cultural heritage of Old Church Street, where all the African Americans had their businesses almost 100 years ago, this is going to be a wonderful thing for the city. It's going to be something that people will come downtown to see. And merchants are going, it's going to be a little, uh, you know, people are going to say, you know, I wish you would get through with this. I can't get to my store, but in the final analysis, everybody's going to be proud of this project. I promise you that. So I'm glad to see that we're getting ready to start it. Anything else, guys? Mr. Harvin, then Mr. Roberts. Just a quick question. Um, I'd, I'd written it down. Do we have a budget on how much it's going to cost to maintain going forward? Or Well, we are. It probably wouldn't be. I remember you said you had a good many ornamentals 
and stuff like that and tree lighting. Um, I, I do not, Mr. Harbin, but I can tell you that we already, our beautification staff is back there already um, doing maintenance and part of their heartache and their cost has to do with the trees that are uprooting the pavement, the uh, pin oak uh, needles that are um, probably not the best in the urban environment. So uh, I think it's probably a bit of a trade-off that we, we're, it may be a little bit more intensive in one area, but in the other area it's less for us. So I, I think it's um, a little bit of both. And have we ever done anything with moats construction? We have. They did uh, West Church Street streetscape most recently, um, and their 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 finished work as far as the type of sidewalks and concrete and brickwork that they did, we were very pleased with, and that is the kind of work that will be involved in this. Mr. Roberts. Um, <clears throat> Ms. McConnell, we talked about um, earlier, and I just kind of want an assurance, and Chris may may need to elaborate but if not it's okay but we're pretty confident we know what's back there correct i mean we, we don't as far we're as not expecting to run any trunks or or whatever else that at this point well no, no promises but i can tell you this um number one we we've, we've been in that parking lot a right good bit in terms of past construction activity but more recently than that, uh, Piedmont Natural Gas and Duke Energy both have been in there laying new lines underground. Um, that has involved certainly our utilities from water and sewer, our, our being you know, connected and, and involved in that. So I think suffice it to say, as much utility work that has been in that area over the past year with those two <coughs> utilities and also with the construction of the Bleckley, we were doing water and sewer, you know, back there as well. Uh, I think we <coughs> certainly know about as much as we can know about the underground status as, as possible. Um, it's also true that Duke has relocated their transformer already, so that work is done. So from a utility standpoint of our own water and sewer, um, Duke and Piedmont, uh, that work is is done, and we sh we should know where all of those utilities are located. Ms. Mayor, Ms. Mayor, Ms. Lockridge. Uh, uh, Dr. Thompson mentioned a few minutes ago that some of the businesses would be affected by this. Have have the businesses been contacted to let them know that this work is going to be done, and and how much of a a problem will it be, say, for the mellow mushroom and those kinds of things? We, we actually have. Thanks, Mr. Lawford, for uh, mentioning that. Uh, back last July, uh, we actually announced this project, but before that, we had uh, gone really door to door talking with all of the all of the businesses who border the property and in in more than that, we talked to those who were affected by it, who um, principally used that parking lot as um, a place for either their customers or their employees. So I think it's fair to say that there, uh, there's been a great deal of effort that's gone forward to talk specifically and individually with businesses and try to ascertain their needs going forward. If you're a dance studio versus if you're a, a restaurant uh, versus an investment office, you know, what kind of needs do you have? How can we help you anticipate them? How can we help you um, continue to keep your business open and your customers coming? Uh, what kinds of incentives can we participate with you? So our economic development staff has been very involved in that process and will continue to be, and if you approve this, authorize this tonight, we'll certainly <coughs> ramp those efforts back up to know exactly um, the extra steps that we can take to make construction as painless as possible and keep activity moving. But it still will affect the businesses at some point, right? It, it, it will, it, there, will certainly, there will certainly be a um, construction area where you will not be able to park, certainly. I listened in on a couple of those meetings. I think we had a couple of them, and one of them, um, I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, we wanted to get going with this last fall. Yeah, that's and, right. And, you know, and, and 
the group to the majority of the group wanted it to be delayed into the first of the year just because of Christmas. Um, I think an, another um, concern was um, I think we even backed off uh, Streetscape uh, in front of the, um, the residents and the, the business, right? Um, um, coming into Church Street from Main Street, right? Just because they thought they couldn't, couldn't, couldn't handle that construction at any point in time. Um, so um, I, I think those those things went pretty good, Miss Chap. I have a couple things. Um, well, one is I, I appreciate that we've gone to the effort of saving the two trees that flank that will flank either side of Church Street. So as you look up the and it's going to look like a park that's been there for a while but um uh, secondly it, i certainly concur with with mr stewart that maintenance is is always a big issue and I've, i think i brought up the same thing when it comes to our buildings parks are the same thing we need to get some kind of formal list that basically how we're going to maintain the things we're building so and then lastly the uh with phase two um because it's going to require of what the condition of the asphalt is going to be in afterwards are we making some provisions for keeping the metal tracks of metal the metal track equipment off the existing asphalt that we're trying to save uh, that is one of the things that we've talked about in terms of creating the um, construction entrances and so forth and whatever types of, of um, matting or pads might be necessary so we'll we'll continue to pursue that okay even if it's just three-quarter plywood laying on the you know to gain access to the site so all right that's it i think the maintenance issue is a big issue too uh, but we had to get the capital equipment fund rolling first but i but i do think you know the the, the way that we have been able to purchase capital equipment over the last year correct and obviously i i i, I hear you guys um that's important too we've been talking about that but uh, I, I think we will address that i didn't entertain a motion you already, well, I already had a motion where, motion okay unless that's the other discussion no we can okay. make All a motion right. and have any other discussion we need to okay well, i move that we award the contract to the moats for this phase one construction Church Street oh. and, and the ch change order and the change order yeah 35,000 have first Dr. Thompson second second by Mr. Lockridge anything else for a discussion all those in favor say aye, aye. opposed that passes unanimously ministry briefing on our calendar for February we're winding down the month this Thursday the 25th we have a public works utilities committee meeting at noon at the Municipal Business Center and there it, the uh, concerned citizens of the east side meet at 5 p.m. at Hope Baptist Church then as you look ahead in March a couple of things happening before we meet again uh, the Anderson County Municipal Association will be meeting in Pendleton please let Brandy or me know if you plan to attend and mark your calendars for Saturday March the 12th for St. Patrick's Day events race the rainbow fun run is at 8 a.m. and the parade is at 1030 downtown and that's all we have Mr. Mayor all right we won't be doing that one <laughs> too much too much chalk and breathing stuff that's uh, that's pretty dangerous I watch it <coughs> Before we adjourn, um, we do have a young man in the audience, Caleb Crow. Is he's waving? Stand up, Caleb. Tell us what troop you're from. Uh, I'm from Troop 84, and I'm here to listen and make a report on your topic. Okay, good deal. What Troop 84 is out of? Is that one of the church groups, or yeah. which church is it? Yeah, Central Press. Central Press. That's what I thought. Good. You have a good report. We have Kurt Brown's son with us today too. What's your name, young man? Andrew. Andrew. Good to be here with your dad. All right, I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Have first on Mr. Stewart, second by Dr. Thompson. 
All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Stand adjourned.